Okay, so when it comes to running your own business and being your own boss, it can look fun and exciting from the outside, but the reality is it can also feel quite challenging. And for me, there have been eight key things that have really helped me to develop in my business, both financially, but also mentally. And that's exactly what I'm gonna be breaking down in this video today. But before we get into all of that, the whole mission behind this channel is to help parenting specialists and sleep consultants who want to build businesses and make a huge impact get their amazingness out there. So one small thing that you can do to help me reach more people is just hit that like and subscribe subscribe button. Okay, so the first thing that I had to quit was other people's opinions. And often in the beginning stages of running your business, you know, everyone has an opinion on what you should be doing and how you should be doing everything. And so my criteria for who I actually take advice from and who I listen to is, have they done what I want to do? Are they more successful than me in what I want to do? And are they living the kind of life that I want. And the last point is really, really key because there are many people out there who are more successful than me, but I may not want their life, like being overtired, doing a million things, not feeling like they have enough or, you know, basically they're unhappy. None of those things appeal. So those are my three benchmark factors. And if they don't fit into that, then I'll take their advice, but I'll take it with a healthy grain of salt. And what I found is that a lot of people in life, you know, they'll give you their opinion and they'll give you their feedback. And that is particularly the case when you're running your own business. And often it's people who are trying to protect you or they can't make sense of what you're doing because they've actually never run a business. And actually sometimes people are just a little bit jealous of what you're doing. Number two, toxic people and toxic energy. So Oprah once said, surround yourself with people who are gonna lift you higher. And in fact, if you listen to a lot of her speeches around growing as a person and in business, this comes up a lot and boy, do I believe it. And I've become very, very careful about who I surround myself with because I needed to be. And that's in my personal life and also in my business life. So I surround myself with people that make me feel great, where our values are aligned and where their energy leaves me with like my metaphorical cup being half full rather than depleted and where there's trust. And I simply believe that life is just too damn short <laughs> to be doing anything else. Okay, so number three, not taking care of myself. So I used to feel like I was really operating with this kind of like push energy. And part of that was the business model I had. So I could just never switch off. I was live launching, I had dem demanding client work, I was running a lot of face-to-face -face programs. And if you've watched my previous videos like this, you'll know that I changed my business model to a scalable business model where I wasn't on all of the time. But that was just part of it. But another thing I almost found harder to change was actually prioritizing my health. So I didn't feel foggy and sluggish. So getting enough sleep and to be honest i often have my kids in my bed from about four o'clock in the morning or we're all bed hopping um, so it's even more important that i'm actually going to bed at a decent hour eating well so actually eating at the right times and really nourishing my body exercise is another thing so i love exercise but making that a priority has been really important and you know do i always wake up thinking like yeah let's exercise not at all, but I do it because I want to be old and I want to be active. I want to feel good in my body and I know it impacts my mental health a lot. So in short, I feel so much better and clearer when I'm taking care of myself. Okay, number four, trying to do everything and please everyone. So what I mean by this is wanting to help everyone. And often I hear this from people who are looking to grow their business and build programs. And they're like, well, I just wanna help all families. I wanna help everyone. And I also hear this a lot when people are talking through their pricing and you know, trying to figure out how to price their offers. They're like, well, 
I want to make it accessible to everybody. Like I hear this a lot, but actually trying to make your program accessible to everyone means that you get people from all different stages of their journey wanting to join and access your program. And then you're kind of like having to customize everything to it's like each spot that they're at. And if you've watched this video, you'll know that a really, really good offer supports one specific person at one stage of their journey looking for one specific outcome. And also Ultimately, you want people to join your program, like ready to take action and do the work and get the results that they need. And then when it comes to pricing, like undervaluing yourself simply cheapens your program or your offer. You know, when we're not in the business of overcharging parents, of course not. But if you have a wildly underpriced program or service, people are going to struggle to see the value in it. So you want to price your service, really understanding the cost you know, to your potential client of not having the result that your program provides. So what's the mental, the emotional and the financial cost to them? Now, in terms of wanting to provide a lot of value to everyone, your free content can do that. That's great. So I'm still able to serve a lot of people through creating free content like you know, this 15 to 20 minute video that you're watching now or on my YouTube channel. And in my childcare training agency, Baby M, we have a lot of freebies. We've got free masterclasses, we've got free online events, and that allows us to support and serve a lot of people. A lot of people that may never join one of our programs, but they're able to still get the guidance and the mentorship that they need. And of course, then there are people who, when they're ready to move forward into one of our programs, they're able to then accelerate into the next level of their growth. So you can still make a massive impact by creating free content and reaching a lot of people through that free content, but you can create a lot more depth and highly duplicatable and impactful results through a paid program. Now, another thing is offering too much in your business. And actually many years ago, when we were doing all the things from ABM um, from mental health training to uh, corporate workshops and everything else in between, we decided to niche down and we decided to only serve postnatal parenting specialists who are passionate about gentle, holistic and evidence-based practice. And at the time that was really scary because I had this mindset that I needed to cast my net wide and I was going to lose a lot of money by niching down. And the opposite happened. We became much more visible, which meant we sold more courses and we really attracted our ideal client, which meant that business felt really joyful. So for me, simplification is key and it's all about quality over quantity. So not trying to do everything to please everyone. Basically just trying to do less better and truly staying in your own lane. So let me know in the comment section if this is making sense to you and if you're having any aha moment right now. Okay, so number five, saying yes to everything. So when you first start your business, it's really normal to be reactive and partly because we're just trying to figure stuff out. Like you're finding your feet and if opportunities come up, you're like, hell yes. And although you don't want to miss out on any opportunities, what's really important is not getting swept up in this kind of like shiny object syndrome, saying yes to everything, because that can really take you off course. And I look back at how I used to travel a lot so I used to travel to countries like you know, Switzerland or Nigeria or China and I'd be working with agencies to like build and launch their programs and those projects would take me out of the business for months in terms of focus and that really didn't serve my deeper purpose but I love traveling and in all those cases I actually really like the people who I was working with and honestly if something sounds fun my eyes always light up. But the thing is, just because you can doesn't mean you should. And from reaching a breaking point in my business where I was severely burnt out and I nearly quit, I nearly sold the company, pretty much because I was just all over the place. What I now know is that, you know, you'll have a load of opportunities, especially as you grow and you have to make a decision and you've got to ask yourself, like, does this opportunity align with my main business goal or is this going to take me off track? And if the answer is yes, and it's going to take you off track, just don't do it. Don't do it. So short term thinking is something that you've really got to be mindful of in the beginning and throughout the whole of your business. And when you choose to only say yes to the things that 
you know, you're truly aligned with, that really fit with your business goal, the easier it's gonna be to create a sustainable and joyful business where you've got that clarity and where you can just show up as the best version of you in your business because you're, you're not being pulled in a thousand directions. Okay, so number six, the perfectionist mindset. Okay, so I definitely struggle with this and it's something that I work on a lot. So to give you an example, in the past, I'd have to look immaculate before creating a video. In fact, my team would often tease me that I would, you know, turn up video ready because I'd have this like totally different look. Like my hair would be straightened and my, it looked like I'd been with a makeup team <laughs> for about three hours. Or another example would be, you know, I'd over prepare for a presentation and let me be clear, being prepared and knowing your shit is sensible, but giving yourself anxiety and not being able to think straight because you feel like you need to look uber professional and not make a teeny tiny mistake is not ideal. And in the early days, I would, you know, I would worry about putting out programs and I was kind of really happy in that dreaming and planning stage, but not so relaxed when I needed to hit go live. And I found that all of these avoidance behaviors or habits, you know, not letting people see the real me or panicking about making any kind of slip up and everything needing to be this kind of version of perfect that I'd created in my own head. You know, all of that was just protecting me from my fear of being judged, the fear of failing. And that was really, really holding me back. And so this is something that I work on with my clients all of the time because it's so important to get your work and your projects and your courses and everything that you wanna offer to the world. Like get it out there, test it. Get your message out there, test it, see how it lands. And it's so, so important. And what I always say is that just confidence comes from doing. And I also know that sweating over how pretty your slides are, it's gonna mean shit if your messaging doesn't land or if people can't log into your program. Like we gotta to learn to know what to prioritize and know that everything can be refined over time. So perfection was a big one for me. And in truth, I actively work on it every single day. Okay, number seven, being busy for being busy. And this was a complete mindset shift for me. And I swear, if there was a award for being busy for being busy, I would have won it. And in the early days of my business, I never felt comfortable unless I was literally stacked, stacked with clients, launches, meetings. And actually, if I had a quiet week, I'd feel something was wrong. And I actually had someone amazing, so a mentor of mine, who really helped me see that this mindset was holding me back. And this thinking pattern had been like reinforced in every job that I'd had over the last kind of like 15 years before I became self-employed. So in my first job working in a very big company doing marketing for big brands, you know, people would work crazy hours. And I basically learned that being visible working you know, 10 to 12 hours a day, looking busy, you know, got you noticed. And then in the international development agency that I worked in, we were massively understaffed, like we had small budgets and I was really busy and I was pretty stressed all of the time because our work had a direct impact on families. And then when I was doing all the things in my own business, especially at the beginning, often prioritising things that didn't need to be done, I kind of thought being stressed and being overworked was normal. That was just part and parcel of being an entrepreneur or running a business. And it took this incredible mentor to help me see that being busy and working six or seven days a week and being inefficient in my business was not normal and it definitely wasn't sustainable. And he also helped me see the importance of having a very, very clear goal and a clear vision and knowing at least at a basic level what needed to be done to help me reach that goal and to just strip out everything else, like the opportunities that don't help you reach your goal, like the tasks that don't make any difference whatsoever in your business, or doing those $10 tasks that take you five hours that should be outsourced. So getting out of this kind of busy, being busy thinking literally changed my business. I'm so thankful for that mentor.
Okay, so my last point is comparing yourself to other people. Now, I'd be lying to you if I didn't say that I have moments where that happens. Like, I'm human. But I've done everything that I can to basically protect my energy and my mindset by not consuming content from accounts or people that make me feel less than who I am. And you don't have to look that far to find these kind of people, right? And what I know to be true is that it doesn't even have to be a direct comparison, you know, with someone in the same niche as you. It can be someone who, you know, I'll find someone who's like uber fit, healthy, beautiful, you know, they've got like six kids, they run their own business, and something will pop up on my feed, and now I'm going down this like rabbit hole of, of self-doubt. Um, but on a serious note, sometimes that just doesn't make me feel great. And I'm a pretty confident person, but when I think about business, I actually thrive and love the fact that there are a lot of people out there who are deemed as competitors because I really see it as an opportunity to collaborate. But the comparison game can really, really mess with your head and it can make you feel miserable and it isn't real because you have no idea what's going on behind the scenes for other people. So really working on staying in your own lane is important. And again, that just comes back to knowing what you're working towards. Like what is your deeper purpose? What makes you unique? And knowing those things really, really does stop you playing that compare game. Okay, my friends, so they are the eight things that I quit in my business in order to build a joyful and profitable business and one that I love running. So I hope you found this video useful. I would love to know your aha moments. So let me know in the comments section below. And I would also love to know what you've given up in your business to help you move forward. So do let me know. And don't forget that the whole mission behind this channel is to help parenting specialists and sleep consultants just like you who are wanting to build a business and make a huge impact in the world and get their amazingness out there. So one small thing that you can help me do is reach more people and get more eyeballs onto what I'm doing. So hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done that already. Okay, folks, that's it from me. I will see you in the next video.